Right. Chapter 1, Section 8, Introduction to Functions. Uh, I just copied a graph, a picture of a graph from the book. Do those terms look familiar to you guys, like origins, yeah. x-axis, y-axis? Uh, my guess is the quadrants are maybe the one thing that would be like, ooh, that's kind of weird. I finally figured out in Algebra 2 why they go this way. You don't have to write them in. They're written in for you. I just want to kind of emphasize it. That they start in the upper left, and then they go around counterclockwise. So it seems like they start in the wrong place and go the wrong way. But quadrants 1, 2, 3, 4, yes? Um, so that's something that's maybe a little bit weird. Um, good. My part down below... Let's say we wanted to graph a point something like 3, 2, and you don't have to write this down, but if you wanted to graph 3, 2 in, say, maybe I should back that up and strike, strike that from the record. Um, say I want to graph this thing here. How do you graph a line with that equation? I'm going to say here's kind of the shortcut. Put in enough values for x, which is kind of a a gray area, how many values you need. But put in numbers for x to find enough points, like x, y values, x, y points, to graph well. And if you have for the second one, I don't know what I want to put in my second set of quotations. Um, enough. That's my problem. It's the same as before. Um, yep. I had a brilliant idea when I typed up these notes and they don't match my handwritten ones, so I got nothing today. Um, let's just move on, shall we? Um, later on, you're going to find a sweet way to graph this y equals 3x plus 2 without finding any points. But for now, your best bet is probably just to go through and make a data table, x and y. So what's one number for x that's probably going to give us a nice y that's on the graph? Somebody? Anyone? Yeah. One. So if we put in a 1 for x, what I'm really trying to say is I want to put a 1 right here. So I have a 3 times 1 plus 2. 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5. Nice shot. So then my y value is going to be a 5. So that's one point on my graph. Another x value that would probably work, I'm going to pick like, say, a, a 2. Sure. Now I could do 3 times 2 is 6. So I'm putting my 2 right here. 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 2 is 8. And if I were to graph those two, so I have an x value of 1, y value of 5. So x means you go 1 over on the x-axis, right? Then I'm going to go up 5 for the y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's right there should be my point. So I have over 1, up 5. If I take my second point, I have a positive 2 on my x-axis, so I go 2 to the right, so it's positive 2. I have an 8 on my y-axis, so I'm going to go up 8. Gets me way to this very top edge. I would not go any higher than that. It's, it's not considered standard form to like start adding like lines up here and so on. Um, eight's kind of the limit of this graph paper. It's kind of like right where the line ends. Um, to find lines, most geometry books say find three points for a line because if you know this is a straight line and your third point is over here, did you make a mistake? Yeah. Yep. There's no way to draw a straight line through those three points. Um, you only really need two lines to draw, or two points to draw a straight line. If I were to pick like an x value of like 3, 4, 5, 6, something over here, is it going to fit on my graph paper? No. Nope. But an x value of what is probably going to have a point that would fit? Go for it, Luke. Negative 3. Okay, sure. Like negative 3 is over here somewhere. Oh, maybe That's, not. No, that should work. Should be over here somewhere. So let's try it. If we put in a negative 3 for x, it gives me a 3 times a negative 3 plus 2. So I have a negative 9 plus 2, negative, negative 7. Because if you're thinking of a number line, negative 9 is over here somewhere. When we add 2, that means we go 2 to the right. So it's negative 7. All right, so to put that on the point or on the graph, we have negative 3 means we have to go 3 to the left when it's negative. Negative 7 for a y means we go down 7. Agreed? So last point then is going to be right there. And then should be able to take a ruler, put a ruler on there, and carefully connect those points. Some things I'm going to be looking for. One, your line should go to the end of the graph paper. If you just give me a short little thing, 
Um, if you miss, like, say, that bottom coordinate, I'm going to mark you down a little bit. You should have arrows on the ends of your line, and your line should go through the right points. So I'm going to look and make sure it's actually going through the right points, not just it's about in the right place. Is that fair for graphing that one? Yeah. Um, then I finally see what I'm supposed to put in my blank. It's just really far down on my page, so I messed that up. If you want to erase, if you're using something that's erasable, you can take that second enough. Apparently, I can't erase, so I move the page. But I'm going to say find corners on nonlinear graphs. So if you have a graph that curves, you want to kind of find where the corner is on the graph. So if we were to graph these two, y equals x squared plus 2, we could do that same thing with doing a data table. And I'm going to just pick, well, if we pick an x value of 2, shall we? 2 squared is plus 2, 6. So I'm going to take and put the point 2, 6 on my graph. So over 2 to the right from the origin, up 6, 3, 4, 5, 6. What's another decent x value, you think? You could try 3. 3 squared is 9, plus 2 is 11. So that's going to be off our graph. So our graph only goes up to 8. 1. Okay, so if we pick a 1, 1 squared is 1, plus 2, 3. So we have the point 1, 3. So over 1, up 3. Another point? Okay, if we do a negative 1, if I put a negative 1 in here, negative 1 squared is positive 1, plus 2 is, ooh, do you guys see a pattern? If we have positive 1, 3, negative 1, 3, any guesses at what negative 2 will give us? Negative 6. 6. Maybe it'll be the same as that there. If we try it, negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is? Plus 2, 6. So negative 2 is 6. So we have a graph that's definitely not a line, right? Yep. And this is what I meant by find the corners of a nonlinear graph. Do you agree the corner is going to be somewhere on my y-axis, it looks like, if it's symmetrical? We just need to figure out where does that thing turn around, where's the bottom. And we could do that by, on my y-axis, the x value is 0. So we take and just kind of in our number line thing, put in, so kind of continuing that number line, put in a 0 for x. When I do that, I get 0 squared, 0, plus 2, 2. So the corner then should be that point right there. You're going to get better at recognizing these things. When you have an x squared in an equation and just a normal y to the first, that's going to be a parabola, which looks kind of like a u shape. Did you guys do those last year? I don't remember. Okay. Then, so you want to try to do kind of like a smooth curve through those points. We found that when x was 3, the y value was 11. It's going to be up here somewhere. So when you do your smooth curve, make sure you don't cross over 3 or negative 3 because that would be off the graph before you get there. That's something that I kind of look for. Ready for the last one? Last one. Ugh. Looks exciting, right? Yeah. That's called being an optimist. Um, all right, so we could do the same thing. We could find some x and y points. So does anybody remember what this thing's going to look like? Did we do that last year? Oh, oh, is that the one that rises up like that? I guess we'll find out. x and y. So OK, x value. Can I pick 0 just because so far it's always been on them? If I do a 0 minus 4 in absolute value, that gives me a negative 4 in absolute value, which is just a 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So I have that. Maybe I'll see if I can erase some of that. So if I get rid of that, that. Okay. I hear a 3. Should we go for a 3? We put a 3 in for x. I have now a, oops, need to erase a little more. I have a 3 minus 4. Gives me a negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1? 1. Plus 1? Two. 2. So, so far we have the point zero, 0,5. I'm going to put those two on the graph. So over 0, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Three, that's a zero, five. And over three, one, two, three to the right, up two, gets me there. When it doesn't read, when it thinks my, my finger, when I put my hand down, instead of reading the Apple Pencil. So. All right, somebody give me another X value you think is gonna be on the graph. Four. four, we could do a four. So if I take and put a four in there, I get rid of this. So, so I'd have a four minus four is zero, absolute value of zero. So I hear it a one, yep, so four, one. All right, somebody else, what another X value do we put on there? Seven. What was it? Two. two. Okay, we could put on a two. If we do a two, we have two minus four is a negative two. Absolute value of negative two plus one, three. So that's kind of right in that line. The graph has to do something weird, right, with absolute value? Should we try a five? We were to put in a 5, so absolute value of 5 minus 4. I'm putting 5 right there for x plus 1. Now I get a 1. Absolute value of 1 plus 1 is, ooh. Now we have 5, 2. One last point. I'm thinking 7. Work for you? 7 is going to tell us where is it on this line here. Help us figure out what's going on. So I were to do a 7. And then I'd have absolute value of 7 minus 4 plus 1. Absolute value of 3 plus 1. So we get a 4. So we have the point 7, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we connect all these points straight, not straight. Well, each side should be, each side looks like it's straight. So absolute value functions, if you have a graph with absolute value in it, it should look like, they call it a piecewise linear function. Each part of it is going to be a straight line, but the whole thing isn't straight. It'll be a V shape, essentially. And uh, So that should be it for the notes. So we can correctly graph points on the coordinate plane. Yup. Origin we know is right here at the middle, right? Can you label the quadrants? Quadrant number one is in the upper right. right. Quadrant number three is in the lower left. Then you can graph equations by putting in values for x, finding corresponding y values, yes. and so on. Awesome.